Hey everyone, it's your buddy Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be jumping through the five tips that will help you win more PvP fights, whether it's 1v1, 2v2s, 3v3s, or much, much more large-scale PvP opportunities that you run into. You're going to want to make sure you are not doing these five things. So the first thing we're going to kind of jump into today is going to be in regards to health pots. So drink pots as soon as you lose enough HP. What I see a lot of people doing, right? As soon as they take about half their health, they'll start using their health pot or even one fourth their health, they'll start using their health pot. Well, you don't wanna use it too early and you don't wanna use it too late. So there is a nice middle ground. If we actually take a look at my health right now, it's about 8,723 health. So what you need to do is take some damage down to about a quarter health, use your health pot, find out exactly how much health you're getting on consumption of that health pot that's going to be very very helpful when it comes down to finding when you should be using your health pots because you don't want to use them too early where you're wasting a lot of that pot and now your pot is on cooldown in case you take a lot of damage and end up dying and you also don't want to use it too late so you want to use it as soon as you can to utilize the most out of your health pot so definitely take a look and see how much it does specifically for you it is based a little bit on uh, a standard number then also scaling based on your health so definitely like I said, check out how much it heals for you specifically. If you actually hover over it, it'll just say restores a large portion of your health. And you also see that the second cooldown is 30. So you're going to have to be very, very, like I said, smart about when you use this to make sure it's healing as much as it possibly can. But you don't want to wait too late until you're just healing up to, you know, three fourths health. And then you have to wait another 30 seconds. Another amazing perk, by the way, that works amazing with this. If you have this perk, it's going to be called refreshing toast. So potions cooldown 25% faster. I'm actually going to use a potion just so you guys can see. If I use a potion, I have 22 seconds till it's back up instead of 30. That's 8 seconds off my potion cooldown, which is absolutely insane when it comes down to 1v1s, 2v2s, etc. So that's another thing to remember. I do want to jump into the next thing. So the next thing I want to jump into is medium armor. If you're dying very, very quickly, medium armor is definitely, in my opinion, the way to go. Right now, there's a couple different ways to get to medium armor, but the main thing to do is get to 22.9 out of 50. That's going to be the uh, really sweet spot because it's going to give you the most physical and elemental resistance and at the same time still keep you in that medium armor threshold where you still get these jumps and they only cost 40, so you can actually get three jumps before you're out of stamina. And then with light armor, you're only getting two jumps, but it is a rule and you guys all know that. So I'm not going to jump too much into the light and medium, but medium is going to give you a ton more tankiness and also you're not going to lose much damage when it comes to bonus damage. You're only going to be at 10% instead of 20, but we've talked about some of the returns on that 20 and 10% bonus damage. It's not as much as you may think it is. I do want to jump though a little bit into the next thing because we've talked about medium, how important it is, but I will say if you guys are trying to go medium, this is what I'm currently wearing to get a full 22.9 instead of that 23 mark is medium head, heavy chest, heavy glove, light leg, medium foot. You can also go heavy head, heavy chest, medium glove, light leg, and medium foot. Those are both possibilities of getting that 22.9 medium armor. Jumping into the next one, though, like I said, there is more to talk about. And I know I'm already starting with the like I said. You guys hit me pretty hard on the last video when I said I'm, you know, I said that I think 10 to 15 times probably. If you seem to die to something a lot, get the gems slotted in your gear. So if we actually take a look here, I have a diamond in this primeval uh, Shade Walker leggings of the Brigand. And it's going to give me 1.9% physical and 0.63% elemental damage absorption. So there are specifics. So if you're dying to great axes, if you're dying to some of the slash damage that, like I said, great axes do, make sure to get great axe resistant or slash resistant gems in the store. If you're dying to fire, make sure to get fire absorption in your gear. This is going to be a kind of obvious thing that people don't really do. So I know, like I said, I have uh, a diamond currently in this one, and I don't really have anything in my other slots right now as this armor is probably not going to last me too long. I'm probably going to be crafting me some new ones soon. So I didn't even, like I said, put uh, any gems into the armor. But the big thing is to note is if you're dying to something a lot, make sure to find out what kind of damage type that is and get the gems that will help you absorb more damage from that type. So you don't constantly die from great axes or constantly die from ice gauntlets or whatever else. I do want to jump into the next one because this one's very, very important. And I see this in gameplay all the time when people just play things a little bit wrong. So it comes down, if you are ranged versus double melee, use your mobility only defensively unless you are 100% going to get the kill. This is something I see a lot of times if we actually take a look here into, if we go to tab and uh, take a look at our inventory, if you are ranged versus double melee, use your skills that are mobility defensively because if they have a great axe hatchet, right, they're going to have insane mobility. 
when it comes down to um, you know some of those double melees, they're going to be going those double melees so that they can specifically kill ranged players. Like Rapier uh, Spear is another one that's fairly good against bow and rapier or even if you're going to musket maybe a less mobility there so you need to make sure to use your flesh uh, you know flesh defensively to kite your post once you get the stun you don't have to always do damage off that you can get more mo more ground so that you can pull your bow out same thing with your evade shot you typically if they're running away you can use your evade shot but typically you're going to want to save your evade shot for if they're coming after you so use your mobility skills defensively if you're in a situation that uh you know you don't think you have the kill quite yet if you have the kill obviously you can flush forward and try to get to them to make sure you get the kill secured i do want to jump into another one this is one that a lot of people i've realized don't take into account and that's weak honing stones these are so 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 cheap to buy the description of the honing stones right now by the way is bugged it doesn't increase your weapon damage by 200 percent for 0.03 percent or sorry 0.03 minutes that's completely wrong what this does is increase your damage by four percent for 10 minutes so it's actually a decent buff so if we actually put this on right now um, you can see the weak honing stone going across the rapier, and you can also see it down here. So increases weapon damage. It still says the wrong description, but you have a 10-minute window there that it increases your damage, and that's going to be on both weapons that increases your damage for 10 minutes. So 4%, very, very cheap on the market. I think it's like 0.1 gold per weak honing stone because it's a great way to level uh, a specific trade skill. So I'm going to jump into another great, great tip for you guys. Hopefully this one helps you out as well. And like I said, it's a cheap buff. It just continues to help you out that 10 minutes there, that 10 minute window. And I think I mentioned, you know, the five tips that really will help you, in my opinion, when it comes to PvP. And if you're having problems, uh, these will typically help you out in war or in Outpost Rush or in even 1v1s, 2v2s when it comes to PvP. But if we actually hit tab again, you definitely want to make sure you have the correct stuff slotted in your consumables. That's going to be hearty meals, which is a tier 5 food, not too expensive. Uh, obviously, this applies to level 60s. For different people, you're going to only be able to get certain tier foods, certain tier potions. So do whatever you can here. But like I said, hearty meals, infused regeneration potions, and infused health potions, and that weak honing stone in my sixth slot. So what I will make sure to do here when I'm you know, running around, let's say I'm going to eat my food. Obviously, want to have food popped at all times. And uh, if somebody's attacking me, you know, I use my health pot. You can see here on the bottom right. If I use my health pot, my regeneration pot is still there. I didn't actually use my regeneration pot yet. So then I can apply the regeneration pot. By the way, what's so, so strong about this is that jewelry that gives me 25% faster cooldowns on potions. It applies to both potion slots. So I'm going to have both of those up very, very soon. You can already see I pretty much have both of those up already. So it's very, very strong to have potions like this. Make sure to have some potions. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will push you guys on over forward to some PvP gameplay so you guys have something to watch a little bit. I won't push too much PvP gameplay on you. Maybe I think I have two fire staff kills. Uh, a fire staff rapier kills against the same guy in Shattered Mountain. I want to save some of my clips because we're going to be doing a big walkthrough on some of these PvP clips. So hopefully you guys can get better at PvP as Outpost Rush. When that comes back out, we are going to have a lot more necessity to actually understand and how to play PvP uh, really on a good full level. So thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, and you can also follow me on twitch.tv slash iGraphicGuy to see and find more content.